Well, hello again, everyone. Mr. Shankler coming back at you with another experiment, an opener, if you will, just getting us thinking about science. All right. So what I have here, obviously, is a candle. And so we're going to be utilizing what we call the fire triangle. Okay. In the fire triangle, we know we need ignition. I had ignition right here. We need fuel. We need something to burn. And we need oxygen. And fortunately, we have plenty of that in this room. Okay. Well, friends, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away one part of this fire triangle. And what I'd like you to do is to pay attention to the part that I take away. And then I am going to relight it using my ignition and my fuel. And I'd like you to pay attention to how I relight it. Okay? All right. So I am going to get the candle lit and quick warning, um, please do not try this at home. Um, if it's an experiment you really do want to try and it calls for an open flame, have an adult that you live with uh, show you because fire and science, fire and anything can potentially be dangerous and we're going to make sure we're safe. Okay? And so I am a trained professional. All right, friends. So let's take a look here at candle. I'm going to get it lit. There we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be relighting it. Okay. So I'm going to take away the oxygen. This is called a candle snuffer. I'm going to take away the oxygen and then I'm going to relight it. Okay. I'm going to cycle this through just a couple of times. All right. Did you see that? How I relit it? Okay. Let's try again. All right. And Okay, so watch closely. I'm going to relight it down here and let me try that again. Take away the oxygen and relight it. Okay, did you see that? Did you watch closely how I relit it? Okay, friends, what I did is something that you might not have expected. Okay. Something you may not be expecting as you're watching it relight. Okay? So be watching closely how I'm relighting it. Okay? Now, if you're watching this with someone else, take a moment and you can pause the video and pay attention and discuss how I went and relit this candle. Okay? All right, friends. Now, you may have noticed that when I relit the candle, I was holding my ignition, my lighter, my flame, above the wick of the candle. Normally when we light candles, we go down like this. But when I was doing it, you'll notice I was doing it from above a number of times. Okay? Now, you might say, well, Mr. Schenker, how did you do that? Well, if you watch closely, you may have noticed that when I did this, I always had my flame in the smoke. And then people say, well, Mr. Schenkler, he usually travels up and your heat was coming at that point was coming from your flame. True. However, in that smoke, there's part of this candle that was that is burning. Okay. And we know candles are made out of wax, right? And so there's some wax vapor that's coming up in the smoke. And so that's actually what I was relighting. That part is the flammable part. Let me show you once again, watch closely. There we go, right into that smoke. Now friends, you might say, well, Mr. Schrankler, um, why are you doing this? Well, one reason is for us to go through a little bit of science, but also a bigger picture is that things don't always seem the way they appear too, okay? All right. Now, that's kind of a cool, just little science demonstration. But let's say we want to do an investigation. I want to do an investigation. And when we do investigations, we know that we change a variable. And we call that variable, we change the independent variable. So let's think, what are some things I could change about this? Okay, I could change the room. I could change the size of the candle. Okay. I could change where I, after I put the flame out, where I hold my ignition, 
Okay, I could change all those things. Those would be variables, but I'd only want to change one variable at a time to see how it affects the outcome. Well, what I'm going to do now is take one variable, and you may have noticed, it's pretty hard to see in the video, but I have on here the length of the wick. And when I started, it was 1.5 centimeters. Okay, so it's 1.5 centimeters. All right, well now, um, I'm gonna quickly relight it, and then I'm gonna do one that is one centimeter. And let's just look, we're not gonna measure today, but let's see if there's any observable difference. And then, so this wick is a little bit shorter, okay? And then I have a wick that is, so this was 1.5. I may have been holding it backwards last time, sorry about that. And then this one is half a centimeter or 0.5 centimeters, okay? All right, so we'll start with the original one first, and then we'll see if we can make any observations of some differences. Um, if I were going to carry this out as an actual long investigation, I might have a measuring tool. So what might I use? I might want to use like even a, I could use maybe a ruler or a meter stick. Okay, so candles out and I relight. Okay, let's try, that was the 1.5 centimeter. Let's try the one centimeter one. Okay, this one is one centimeter. That's how long the wick is. All right. Hmm, interesting. Smaller flame. In fact, I'm gonna give it a little more ignition here. I wonder why it's smaller, a smaller flame. The wick is shorter. Well, I could get a little bit closer. Let me sight, we call this cycling it through a couple times, see if that changes anything. Well, I have to get pretty close to it to get it to relight. Okay. In fact, I'm actually putting my flame right on. Okay, so I would say I'm not able to use the smoke vapor at all to light the wick, as I did in the 1.5 centimeter one. Hmm, well I have even a shorter wick right here in this 0 0.5 centimeters. Let's try that one. Okay, and let's see how that one goes. So I'll light this one, okay, and take away the oxygen. I have to touch the wick of this one that time. Let's see. Oh, I was able to get it a little bit closer, okay, without touching it, and then get it to relight. Okay, friends. So I think it's fair to say that the longer wick allows us to use the smoke vapor a little easier to relight the candle. That could be one claim that we could make based on this. In fact, the others, I basically had to bring it right down the flame, right down to the wick to relight it, and I couldn't use that smoke vapor. Let's check this out one more time. Okay, and so I'm gonna light this. Okay, and our candle relight. Again, right in that vapor, and I am quite a ways above the wick when I'm relighting. Let's try it one more time. Sometimes if I let too much smoke vapor dissipate, get into the room, then it's hard to relight. Okay, friends. Well, thanks for tuning in. All right, and just as a reminder, I know a lot of us get intrigued by experiments like this. However, it, this one calls for an open flame, so only adults are doing this one. Um, an adult could demonstrate it to you, or you could see it here. All right? Uh, keep up the great science work, and stay curious.